Hello and welcome everyone to our event towards a fairer care-focused Europe, which is organized in the framework of the Six Progressive View Forum of the SD Group. Um, my name is Agnes Mach and I'm policy officer at the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung EU office here in Brussels. Um, I am very glad that we have such a great panel gathered here today with us to discuss how to improve the situation of both paid and unpaid care workers in Europe. Um, I think the past year has made obvious to everyone how essential care work is to make our society and everyday life function. But this has not yet been followed up by concrete measures to actually enhance the conditions that care workers are working and living in. So today we want to discuss the main challenges that care workers are facing and formulate proposals to achieve a Europe that actually cares for care, as is our motto. Um, on behalf of FES and FEBS, I would like to thank all our partners for their help and support in making this event possible today, um, which is the SD Group, the Young European Socialists, the European Public Services Union, and Unicare Global Union. Um, we here at the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung have been focusing a lot of our recent activities on the topic of care work. And in the past year, together with Letizia Tissen from FEBS, we started a joint progressive initiative together with a network of gender equality experts from all over Europe to um, actually develop some concrete policy recommendations. And as part of this project, um, we have created a short campaign video to raise the public awareness on the importance of care work and the need to show more actual appreciation for its value. And um, to get the event going, I would like to now share it with you all. Imagine living in a world where heroes are invisible. Well, this is not fantasy, this is simply our world. Throughout our lives, we depend on care. It's something we cannot do without. It took a global pandemic to make us realise how crucial these care workers are for our well-being and our economies. But despite the applause, care jobs are still undervalued and underpaid. Carers continue to work in precarious and vulnerable conditions. And who are the ones at the forefront? Women, often from underprivileged backgrounds and migrants. Most care work is not even paid at all. The essential everyday tasks at our homes remain invisible and unacknowledged. They are performed by an overwhelming majority of women. The resulting physical and emotional toll inevitably prevents their economic independence. Socially constructed gender roles are behind these inequalities. We have realised care is essential. Now we have to act on it. Our economies, our lives cannot go on forgetting that paid and unpaid caregivers are the ones that cover our most basic needs. We must value them with impactful policy changes, with a cultural and political shift in the way we organise our societies. We need to move away from a profit-driven model of growth to a care-driven model. It's time for a care revolution. We need to care for care. And, um now, during our project, we already discussed some proposals on what has to be done to truly achieve such a care revolution, as we call for in the video. And um, one of our members of our expert next work, Barbara Helferich, has used those insights of our workshops to write a publication that analyzes the current situation and makes some proposals. Um, so welcome, Barbara, and also welcome MEP Lina Galvez Munoz for joining us today. Um, now, most of you will already know Barbara because she has been an expert on EU gender equality policies for quite some time now and is also co-founder of a feminist think tank, Gender 5 Plus. And um, she will now um, use the opportunity to present some of the insights of um, the publication and the recommendations that she makes in there. Um, you will also find the publication in the chat and on the FEPS website. And um, MEP Munoz, we are very glad that you can join us today because you are a member both of the Committee on Gender Equality and Women's Rights and on the Committee of Employment and Social Affairs. So just the right 
person to um, make some short comments um, on your impression of the recommendation that Barbara made just after her presentation. Mm -hmm. um, so Barbara, I would now give a floor to you so that you can um, present your insights. Thank you, uh, Agnes, Agnes, thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank you for inviting me and, and being part of this really exciting and incredibly a timely project of uh, Does Europe Care for, for Care? Um, let, let me now just introduce the, the, the main lines of the, the, the publication and, and of the project um, and, and basically trying to assess the current care crisis, not only because of the pandemic, but because there, there has been a lingering care crisis for a very long time uh, and associated very strongly with structural gender inequalities. Um, and just to, to take you back a, a, a bit, the, we all know that um, issues of care are treated and were treated as an extremely private uh, issue and, and mainly concentrated in, in women's hands. Uh, in recent years, and particularly with the pandemic, we've seen that care has become an, a visible has become visible, like <clears throat> no no like like no no time before. Um, we also know that the uh, populations growth, um, aging societies, and as well as changing family patterns globally, uh, has made care one of the most important. Uh, socioeconomic activities, still it remains very undervalued. And as, as was pointed out in the video, uh, most fam uh, most, mostly feminized. Um, and, and moreover, in, in, in terms of women's increased participation in the labor market, this has not been balanced by uh, less unpaid care work, uh, care work at home. So, in our analysis, we are making uh, a difference between obviously unpaid care work and, and paid care work. Um, and as you probably all know, women spend so much more time on care work than uh, in comparison men do. Uh, global statistics show us that women spend about 4.25 uh, minutes um, daily on care work uh, compared to men who spend uh, on average 1.3 1.23 um, hours on, on unpaid care work. So 4.25 hours of care work daily for women and 1.23 uh, hours for, for men. And then women, as was pointed out in the video too, 70% of the healthcare workers, that is the, those in, uh, in paid employment relating to care uh, are, are women. Uh, and they, they, uh, they are a workforce which oftentimes suffer from uh, very, very bad working conditions. Uh, some of them the worst working con conditions. There are the particularly vulnerable groups among those care workers in the informal economy as domestic workers being uh, oftentimes exposed to uh, violence and and um, we, there are some some new studies around that uh, and they are they are less protected by uh, by union um, participation representation uh, suffering low labor protection and very low social protection and then as we've seen recently or in, during the last year uh, most of those who, who we call frontline workers in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic uh, are, um, are uh, uh, women uh, working as uh, in, the, in the care sector. And compounded to that is also there's an, in, during the pandemic, there was an incredible increase of unpaid care work, in particular in single headed households. So that, that those are the kinds of conditions we are, we are facing at the moment, which could be summarized as we are really approaching a care a crisis. Um, it is true, it is true that more attention has been paid to care and care workers during the pandemic. 
It is also true that care is on the, the political spotlight at the moment. But the question really that we have been asking ourselves is, does that translate the, the kind of attention, the clapping, does that translate into tangible policies that put, that put care at the center of economic activities? Uh, and this is where, where we are really asking ourselves what kind of uh, reforms or revolution uh, needs to be uh, undertaken in order to value care for what it is worth um, and, and to understand care as a central economic activity uh, and do care needs to be given to care in that sense. Because if it, if it comes down to it, care policies really at the end define the relationship between the providers of care and, and here we have the family, the traditional uh, family women providing care, the marketplace, which it, in, in the sense relates to private crashes and private care services, and then the state, which provides public care services, gives a legal framework uh, and, and uh, deals out certain benefit uh, regimes. So care policies address time, they address money, and they address services. And this is the, the way we've been looking at this. Now, the EU is obviously um, the first place to look for a new impetus on, on, on care, on a, on, a, on a framework for new care regimes. And looking at what we have already in the EU uh, is rather limited. And most of you know about the maternity leave directive, which actually uh, provides for minimum standards and has been quite instrumental in raising the protection of uh, pregnant women uh, throughout Europe. Uh, dating back to 1992. We have the recent work-life balance directive, which still needs to be transposed and, um, um, and, uh, and, and regulates for the first time uh, or, or, or looks at a paid paternity leave. Uh, we have the Barcelona targets, which regulate or, or give a guidance uh, for member states to provide childcare services. And then we have the different funding mechanisms at European level. But all of that doesn't translate into really upgrading care and putting it into the center of uh, economic activities. Most recently, we have the EU uh, equality strategy on care. Uh, but again, rather disappointing, it remains at the level of care provision. It certainly does not address uh, those structural inequalities that are expressed in terms of, for example, the gender pay gap, uh, working hours and working conditions for women. Uh, and most importantly, it does not include the use of macroeconomic instruments to help place care at the center of economic activity as well as decision-making. So those are the, 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 the context in, in, in which we are working uh, at the moment. Um, and we are calling for a, a real shift away from GDP driven policies to a people centered and care focused economic approach to care. It is argued here that the existing models of care, especially for the elderly and those who care for them uh, are, are rapidly becoming unsustainable. Uh, it is also said very clearly in the publication that it violates both the rights of those who care, the carers, and those who are cared for. So in, in the sense, um, it, it defines what we put, put as the care crisis. Um, as a result of the, 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 the now going on for years, a neoliberal dismantling of the welfare states and the aging population uh, and the chronic lack of, of, of care is becoming worse and worse as we speak. Um, care is really becoming a pressing political and economic issue. Um, and so we need, to, we need to look at ways and means to 
um, dispel of the tra tra traditional premise that families and predominantly women uh, represent this unlimited reservoir of care, which can adapt flexibly to ever-changing care needs. Uh, and that is now being challenged, um, particularly during the, the pandemic. So we're calling for the development of a new European care deal, which should provide uh, for, for uh, the promotion and improvement of gender equality uh, and a care deal, which is also part of uh, the European gender uh, equality strategy. Uh, we, need to, we need to pay attention to uh, the policy context. We need attention to revaluing care uh, and that care is being reflected in each of the existing national care regimes in, in the European care regime and that the use of macroeconomic fiscal mechanisms uh, must underpin a new robust and equitable care structure. Um, this, is, this, is the, uh, this is the approach that needs to be taken. So uh, in, this, in, in a sense, uh, the existing instrument for a new care deal, uh, giving value to care and gender equality um, and the integration into the macroeconomic strategies could foster better care regimes. Uh, going through uh, using the, the existing governance structures, such as the European semester, uh, such as public procurement rules as they apply to care, um, to establish a human centered working hour regime, the promotion of a minimum wage floor directive. Uh, and we are also proposing 10, a 10 point plan, so to speak, to address the current shortcomings of existing provisions of care. Uh, and these 10 points are, uh, these 10 points uh, are structured around uh, some fundamental principles. And the, the first principle is that it, it needs to be a European, um, a people-centered approach respecting gender equality. The approach needs to be uh, take account of intersectionality uh, and it needs to address all phases of life. And looking at the, looking at the existing care regimes, we need to have a bet, much better understanding uh, of um, statistics. Uh, we need statistical analysis and indicators. Uh, we need care checks, particularly to monitor uh, procedures for social and we need to make economic and social impact assessment before presenting legislation on care. There needs to be investment in gender proven public infrastructures, including crashes and care facilities and services. Uh, there needs to be more sufficient public investment via the structural funds. Uh, gender budgeting is an is a, is, a, is a must um, needs and needs to be applied in relation to care. And as I have said before, the use of macroeconomic tools and mechanisms to put care at the center of economic uh, activities um, is, is also a must. We need to redesign the tax framework and redirect substantial public investment in and valuing of care. Uh, training and ed education is fundamental for family carers and acknowledging the value of their work and it's relevant for gender equality. And finally, the 10th point is really to promote self-care, a very important issue, which has to be acknowledged for its importance rather than uh, goes undermined due to women's disproportionate unpaid care burden. So this is a very practical uh, plan that we are proposing, uh, a plan that is um, translatable into concrete policies and a plan that needs to be uh, applied and implemented as quickly as possible. Uh, obviously, uh, there, there are other issues uh, that need to be uh, addressed as well, but this gives us a frame in which to work and to address 
from the European level, the current care crisis, uh, which has been made so obvious uh, during this pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara, for this presentation and for the quite comprehensive action plan that you proposed in our publication. And um, now we have several care workers invited as well today um, to engage in the discussion. But before I give over to my colleague Letizia Tissen, who will um, um, moderate this discussion, I would like to just ask you, MEP Munoz, to give us um, very briefly just one or two thoughts um, on what you think about the proposals made in this publication. So, um, yeah. yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, I did not, sorry all that, I did not hear my, my name. So, thank you very much for inviting me here. Um, I'm, I'm so glad to be here, not only because I am really on fan committee and uh, on the employee committee and, and now dealing with the semester. Uh, as a reporter of the semester file, uh, but also because uh, up to two years ago, um, when I'm still a university professor, and I have written extensively on, on care, um, on feminist economies, uh, on, on, on time use. In, uh, in fact, we, we have already in 2011, two years ago, I was looking now, um, an article that was published in Feminist Economics uh, uh, regarding these care regimes and um, um, uh, comparing them through time use. And I also have been um, visiting professor of the Center for Time Use Research at, at then at Oxford University and now at the UCL. So it's, 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 um, it's a topic I, even, I have even picked up a, one of my books which is in Spanish, which is The Economy of Care. So this is a topic that is very, very, very close to to my, not only to my heart, my political um, life now, but also to my previous life as a, as a feminist economist. So I couldn't agree more with you, uh, with your uh, report, I think is, 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 is what we need. We really, we were already in a care crisis before. The only thing is now that the iceberg is now more a bit more difficult, the visible, sorry, now than it was uh, before, but uh, still, even if more visible, I think it's still completely undervalued and we are not yet close. That's um, maybe not very optimistic on that uh, sense, but I think we are not yet close to this CUR deal, this uh, transition towards a new organization of CUR. I mean, it is up to us if we could move. I mean, the, the, the 10 points you have presented, um, I, uh, as I say, I could uh, uh, agree more. We need still better indicators. I mean, the United Nations was very active uh, a decade ago with the gender statistics. I've been, uh, I have participated on them, but they, they are not organizing anymore. So there is a kind of, uh, we are not advancing as much as we were advancing a few years ago on, on gender statistics. And there is a lot to be done in the respect in order we could advance also in an, an analysis and, and, and policies. And um, of course, I, I, as I say, I agree with uh, all points I will uh, mention later, especially probably more on the, on the seven one, on this macroeconomic policy and this economic governance you were saying uh, at the very beginning, we need a human center approach uh, that should be uh, uh, the, the, the center of our um, economic policy. And I would say that we, of course, we need to measure success uh, in a different way, but not also in a macro level, I think also in an individual level, in order we uh, end up undervaluing valuing, uh, care, which, which, which is the problem we still have is uh, we, we cannot see because of the, this iceberg uh, metaphor, if we want. But even the, 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 the part we see, we say, ah, how important it is, how important it is. But at the end, it is not. Just look to the, and um, I finished with that, just look to the, uh, to the plans, the, 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 the um, 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 recovery, uh, transformation, and uh, uh, resilience plans that are now being designed in each countries. There, there are uh, this called twin transition, which is the, the, the environmental one and the digital one. 
and socialists all over the round, but there is no indicators as there are on macroeconomics that are environmental issues. There are not clear indicators, there are not milestones, there are not um, um, measurable goals. And uh, it's not at the same level. We really need a third transition uh, towards a new organization of care that is at the same level because these two areas, especially environment and digital are very much male dominated. And unless we introduce uh, this, this third transition towards uh, this core deal, the new organization of care, we will not be close to 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 make that uh, that step we really need to 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 do so i'm happy and uh, happy to work together uh, on this uh, movement that is will still need to to work very hard so thank you i'm sorry if i've taken a bit longer than but as i say it's, it's something that is very close to my expertise and also to my heart thank you yeah which is exactly why we are very glad that you joined us today for this debate and um, to continue the discussion, I would now like to invite um, the other panelists to um, join as well. And I would now give over to my colleague Letizia Tissen from FEBS to um, mod continue moderating the discussion. Yes, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Agnes, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, after this first round uh, with uh, Barbara's presentation uh, uh, announcing and launching the publication together with the very valuable co uh, comments made by Lina, indeed I'm inviting all the speakers uh, to join us and to continue uh, with this second uh, part of the, of the program, uh, which I could not be more delighted to be moderating here today. Uh, my name is Leticia Thyssen, I'm Fed Gender Quality Policy Advisor, and I have to admit we are also dealing with my absolute favorite topic, uh, and that is the issue of care. Uh, not, not only because it is crucial for gender equality, uh, but also and simply because it is something that connects us all very deeply as human beings, uh, regardless of who we are across class, age, gender or race. Uh, Care has become one of the cornerstones of our work on gender equality at FEBS, and particularly uh, on our joint work together with FAS, with whom we have closely followed the issue of care for a while now already, uh, and actually quite way before it suddenly became uh, uh, trendy to, uh, to talk about care with the, uh, with the outbreak of COVID-19. Uh, the paper just presented is one of the very concrete outputs of our endeavor, uh, but we have also established a very solid network of progressive care experts, having Baba as one of the representatives, but also Eleanor Kaufman, uh, who is uh, joining us uh, now. Uh, she's a professor uh, of gender, migration and citizenship at Middlesex University of London, and also visiting professor at the Institute of Global Affairs at the London School of Economics. Welcome to you as well, Eleanor. Uh, for us, it was not only important to involve the, the care policy experts, uh, but we wanted also uh, to involve and keep the discussion as close as possible to people's real experience. Uh, so we do not only speak about care workers, uh, but we want to speak with them and for them. Uh, and that's, that is precisely why I'm particularly uh, delighted to be joined also by Alina, Luis and Anna for a direct reality check as we engage in conversation. So let me also welcome uh, the three of you on behalf of all partners. Uh, I count on you particularly uh, to react what will be said uh, in the exchange and the discussion uh, throughout, uh, throughout the event. So do not hesitate, uh, particularly as our uh, care worker representatives, uh, to react using the, the react button in, uh, in the Zoom or uh, the old fashioned way by raising your hand uh, and drawing, uh, drawing attention. I would like also to mention that uh, amongst our audience, uh, we, we expect uh, the participant of the SD Progressive Youth Forum. Uh, and uh, of course, them together with the broader audience uh, are very welcome uh, to actively engage with us. Uh, you can do so by sending us uh, your question, either uh, specifically on the paper that was just presented or uh, to our speaker, more generally speaking, uh, as they arrive throughout the discussion. And we have, of course, uh, a whole team uh, behind the screen that will, uh, that will help us uh, bring them to, uh, to the speaker via the, the Zoom chat uh, or uh, the, the Facebook Live uh, on which uh, the, the, the discussion is also streamed. So make sure you take this opportunity to engage from the other side of your screen, wherever you are, and you will be, the, you will be given uh, the priority to, uh, to have your voice heard. 
Uh, also, do not hesitate to share your impressions uh, on social media using the hashtag Care4K that is just uh, here in uh, my virtual background. And without further ado, uh, let's, give that, let's keep that promise of giving the voice to our care workers. Uh, so we will start by listening to their testimonies, uh, sharing uh, their personal stories with us before I turn to the panelists, asking them for their very first uh, reaction uh, of these uh, stories. Uh, first of all, we will take you to the very north of Europe, uh, and more precisely to Lithuania with, uh, with Alina, who is also representing EPSU, the European Federation of Public Services Union today. Uh, the floor is yours, Alina. Uh, the next couple of minutes are entirely for you. Thank you, Leticia. Uh, hello, my name is Alina Tenkelun. I am, like Leticia said, from Lithuania, Vilnius. I'm working in the biggest uh, hospital in Lithuania, Santeros Clinic, like a pediatric nurse. I really love my job because uh, for me, children is uh, something present of the God. In my unit, we have a lot of sick newborns. During pandemic, uh, these numbers uh, stayed the same. Even it, it became more because um, it was quarantine and people stayed uh, more together at home. And uh, we had even a joke uh, for quarantine babies because they started to born uh, nine months after, after the, uh, we started uh, pandemic. Not us, but pandemic started. Oh, I'm not frontline worker, but... Uh, my job is very important too. If what were units can be closed, my can, because uh, because it's really hard because it is really sick newborns and they born uh, with a lot of issues of health. And uh, if, for example, orthopedic can stop uh, do the surgeries because it's not important for now. It is for a long time uh, importance, but if newborn have health issue, we need to help him. And uh, we are trying uh, to do our best uh, to save that newborn's life and make them recover as soon as possible. And we are really happy in our places right places where pediatric nurses can do the most in this, during this pandemic. Being a pediatric nurse, it's really hard because you can speak with adult and ask him it's hers or not hers. Newborn will not tell you. Sometimes newborns even don't cry. So we have, we need to have some feeling, sixth feeling, to know then you need to do it and uh, then it is the right thing to do. So if you will have question about my profession, please don't hesitate to ask me. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Alina, indeed, uh, for giving us a glimpse into the the reality of uh, pediatric nursing. Uh, and after this very first uh, engaging input, we will immediately proceed uh, with the second one, uh, moving south uh, to Portugal with Luis, uh, who is also a nurse and, and as well active as, uh, as part of the Young European Socialist Network. Uh, and um, he, uh, the first is yours now, Luis. Hi, thank you very much, Leticia. Good afternoon, everyone. Before starting, I want to greet everyone present and want to deploy thank you for the invitation to be present in such an important discussion room and to take a word of affection and strength for everyone in these very difficult times that you are living. My name is Luis Mota. I come from Portugal. I have been a nurse since 2016. I work in the neurosurgery department at Hospital St. Jean in Port, and I'm also a member of Portugal the Young Society. Since the beginning of my professional activity, I have had the opportunity to visit several different realities, like nursing homes and hospitals. Over the past few years, I have known the reality of difficulties experienced by nurses in Portugal. In my opinion, the biggest difficulties about nursing practice in Portugal are the devaluation of the nursing career, namely the freezing of career progression, 
not being recognized as a risk profession, short-term contracts, low prices, and lack of human resources. In addition to all these contract issues, it's very difficult for us not to be carried away by emotions and maintain some coolness and distance with patients' life histories. Being a nurse is exhausting, physical and mentally. Yesterday marks one year from the first case of COVID-19 in Portugal. I will never forget when I experienced it this year. We did as much as we could. Just thinking about the lack of mechanical ventilation fans was useless. Intensive care, hospitalization and emergencies are made of quality human resources. Only that saved life. We live in scary times. In the face of my teammates, I saw the same pain, fear and worry that I felt. We are exhausted. Fortunately, things are getting better. It's time to look back and recognize all the good work done by nurses and the all other health professionals. We are extremely grateful to all the people who have been applauding us at the balcony in the past year. But I think the time has come to draw the attention of all these people to difficulties and these felt it by nurses. It's time to ask our governments for more investment in health, namely in the hiring of more human resources, better contract conditions, allocation of risk subsidies to nurses, creating of psychological support officers for nursing and specialized training. Health is the most precious asset we have and we must protect it. But for that, we must also protect those who care for us. Thank you all. Obrigada, Luis. Uh, I think here we already have some quite uh, strong calls, so I'm already looking forward to the reactions of our speakers. Uh, but last but not least, we will virtually now travel east, uh, and that is to Poland with Anna, uh, who is also today representing Unicare. Uh, Anna, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot. It's, it's very nice to be here with you and share my experiences. Um, my name is Anna Bacia and uh, from Uniker, and I'm a physiotherapist in Poland working uh, in this area for almost 20 years. And uh, to illustrate the situation in Poland, the situation of care workers in Poland, I want to give you one example what care workers hear very often from the directors of care homes, they can hear, if there are any complaints at the work, they can hear there is a bus of, full of Ukrainian caregivers if you, if you don't like the job here. So that's very, that's very sad, but it's often. And uh, what's interesting that when COVID-19 came to Poland, the bus disappeared. There are no more so so many people from somewhere that wants that want to work in in care homes. So we we took this chance and we we set up a union uh, together with uh, Cos and Unicare and we set up a big uh, uh, nationwide sectoral care union. And now we have uh, three hundred. We have almost 300 members in six care homes and we are still developing. So our goal is to join people, to, to join workers, care workers from all, the, from all over Poland and to, to get power, to, to have the influence, uh, to have the influence uh, on decision makers in government. That's our main goal, because uh, as, as we all know, care workers are now more important than ever, but in Poland, they, they are still underestimated, underpaid and not enough visible. And there's still, there's still a big fear among care workers because of hostile management in many places. Uh, but uh, we have first wins in our organization. Uh, we set up this organization in August last year and we managed to build solidarity in two of our six care homes and we won first benefits. So the, we have two most important successes. The first one is that in one care home, we, the workers got the minimum wage because they even, they even didn't get this, this money, this minimum. 
And the second, uh, the second big success is that uh, workers in one closed uh, uh, care home uh, was they the worker they the workers they were released home after the ten days of being closed, and it was not so easy to do it. And we used union to help to help uh, to help uh, to uh, to talk with the with the local authorities. So uh, we are at the beginning of our of our way, and th there's uh, still much much to do here. But I, I'm very happy that we that we managed to do it. Uh, although during COVID time, it's it's more difficult to meet with people and and to to, to organize people. And uh, one one interesting thing uh, uh, at the end I want to say is that the. What, what is the most important for, for care workers in Poland? Uh, when, you ask, when you ask a care worker, uh, what do you expect from the union? What can the union help you to achieve? They answer, we want respect for our work. That's the most important thing. It's even more important than, than money. So it's, so it's on the first play. And that's on the first place. That, that's why uh, we, were, we will work on making care in Poland uh, more and more visible to show how significant it is. Thank you. Thanks to you, uh, Anna, and thanks to the three of you. Uh, I think uh, we would all agree that uh, that your stories very well underscore the main struggles and challenges that you face in your in your daily lives uh, as care workers in your respective regions uh, and professions. Uh, but also, we can sense some clear demands uh, to politics here. Uh, and now that you managed to catch our attention, let me also turn to, uh, to, the, to the panelists uh, and ask them for the first reaction in their capacity as, uh, as policy experts. Uh, I, would, I would like also to, to mention to our audience uh, that we have a, a slide that you can see just here. So to, to all the participants, uh, I would like you also to, to interact with us and to, to share um, how you, uh, how you uh, interpret uh, care and how you feel about care, uh, having listened uh, to these very strong uh, testimonies. So don't hesitate uh, to fill it in. Uh, there will be a word cloud that we can show at the end so that we also know what you think about that. And the password is also uh, right here. Um, so perhaps uh, starting with Eleanor, uh, and also in the light of, uh, of the extensive work that you've been conduct, uh, conducting uh, uh, on, uh, on care workers, uh, what, are, what do these testimonies uh, tell, to, tell to you uh, and how do you, how do you react uh, about this? Uh, thanks very much. I think what we hear here is a variety of uh, occupations in care work. So we're ranging from pediatric nurses to general nurses, I think Luis's, I wasn't very sure, um, to Anna's, which is about care workers in a home. And I think there are very different um, appreciations of these kinds of workers, because I think, if I may say so, I think nurses are underappreciated, but care home workers are even more underappreciated uh, in general, I would say in Europe. Um, so I think it's, it's worthwhile bringing out the diversity I think um, the, the lack of respect, but also the lack of remuneration is, is some of the things that care workers have to face. I don't know whether you want me to comment on some of the things that also Veronica had to say in the chat box, um, because that, ten, that links up with Anna's testimony. Uh, and I think, it's, it's, I think there needs to be much more unionization of care home workers, because generally of nurses, there is unionization, but certainly of care home workers, there often is not. But I think what we also need to think of, and this comes back to Veronica's point, is there needs to be in whatever European policy we have is much more intersectional analysis, because a lot of care workers are either uh, current migrants or very many of them are also um, past migrants or children of migrants who are doing this care work because it's under remunerated and it's something we need to come back that Barbara has also mentioned. Um, there's in terms of policy there's been the liberalization of this sector has led to a pushing down of wages hugely and not just wages but of conditions of work and then that leads of course to calling upon migrant workers to do that kind of work. And I think that in terms of unionization, I think we need a unionization that covers both 
migrant workers, minority workers, and um, non-minority workers. I think the unions have to cover, and that's a long history of conflict often between in the unions about covering all care workers. I mean, these would be my first um, kind of reflections on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Eleanor, for this uh, first uh, and initial uh, reaction. Uh, and now I'd like to turn to, uh, to Baba uh, to also hear about her own uh, reaction and uh, how uh, this, uh, how do you think uh, this, uh, this tells us something about the state of care in, uh, in Europe? Yeah, thank you, um, Leticia, and thank you uh, very much. Um, uh, I just wanted to come back to what Eleonore said, uh, and, and that's the unionization. Uh, and I think this is really a crux, uh, a very, very important matter because it, 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 it covers workers' protection. And, and we see that particularly in home services, uh, that is very, very much lacking. And, and uh, uh, secondly, the intersectionality is a very important issue, uh, which is oftentimes, even if when there are statistical analyses, we, we know so little about the composition of the workforce. And, and thirdly, care covers the sector is so incredibly diverse and it covers everything and the only common denominator is really it's feminized it's overly feminist and it's, it's, it's so much under underpaid uh, and then i wanted to come back to to to, to something else that that anna was also mentioning um, and we haven't mentioned it before that that, that is the um the care drain that is actually uh the, actually happening so uh care workers underpaid, severely underpaid care workers uh, be, being shipped into another country uh, and then leaving that country without proper care, care workers or care resources uh, and then undercutting the already low wages uh, of existing care workers. Um, and, 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 and so it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crisis. And what, what, what the testimonies really tell us, um, the, the, the real the, the, the incredible difficult positions that care workers, uh, the nurses, the uh, elderly care workers are, are, are facing. And, and we, we just need uh, A, to, to have a system that integrates them and properly pays them and values them. And in terms of value, that is something that, that where I'm still, what I'm still struggling with, because value is normally associated with monetary, uh, monetary means, uh, we have the clapping, but we don't have the financial support of, of these care workers. And secondly, don't forget, uh, many of the care workers work part time or have to work part time because they do unpaid work at home. That has an impact on the on, on pensions if there is enough pension. Uh, and then we have not only the, the, the gender pay gap or the, the, the care pay gap, but we also have the pension uh, gap and, and which then the, 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 whole, the, the people working in the sectors uh, are more, uh, <clears throat> more at risk of poverty than in, in, in other similar sectors. So, um, and I commend you on inviting uh, these testimonies because it really brings us, brings it home to us rather than uh, just a, an academic analysis. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, uh, and and thank you also for for raising uh, the the important point uh, on the gender pay gaps, uh, which by the way uh, today is an important uh, important day for this because uh, the the European Commission uh, is uh, releasing its pay transparency directive as we speak. Uh, so I'm sure that we will get to know more about this, and perhaps we have also more opportunity to uh, elaborate a bit further on that aspect. Uh, but first, I would like to give also the the chance to Lina uh, to uh, to share with us uh, what came to her. Mind. Mind, uh, when she uh, listened uh, to, uh, to our uh, testimonies. Well, I can't uh, thank you. Um, and thank you very much for all your testimony. It came to my mind, um, precarity, uh, this uh, undervalue, as Barbara was saying, because value is still linked to, to, to economic value, but no real value. So you, we could have a lot of clapping, but at the end we are paying really very badly and uh, we have in, in world poverty and uh, also we have this current drain that is it, it is very important so obviously for 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 that we all we 
do not only need uh, uh, what we normally consider equality policies or even gender equality policies. Um, I think um, we need also to, to tackle very much labor uh, laws because uh, we have, uh, where I was saying even before, during all this neoliberal period, uh, labor legislation uh, has become more and more and more uh, neoliberal, less protection for workers. We have, we have now new forms of work that are not ver protected in, in many ways. There are a lot of you know, places where um, just to uh, overcome this uh, legislation and there are many workers that are not protected we have uh, in work poverty. But especially, uh, um, and even as well as important, but really for me is, is very important, we have really to, to tackle the, the economic policy and the macroeconomic policy and at the economic governance of the, of the European Union because it has been so, so, so liberal all over the years. It has, has this, what we call this deflationary bias. And we cannot come back to the austerity. It was Barbara, you were saying that the, the semester, the semester was forced in many countries as my own country to make labor reforms that were not protecting workers to cuts on, on, on social expenditure. So it's normal. I mean, administration, they are not uh, uh, investing in care because um, they cannot uh, really uh, uh, spend because of the deficit and so on and so forth. So it was important, and we included in the, in the, in the semester that social issues should be at the same level as macroeconomic ones, and we cannot take any uh, macroeconomic adjustment unless we, ha we do an ex ante uh, um, 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 uh, evaluation of what is uh, going on because we cannot came back at all to austerity. So we have also included that escape clause uh, 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 of the, um, 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 or say the, the, well, the austerity, uh, the, the escape clause I, I, uh, will continue and these policies that are expansionary will continue as much as is needed because we cannot came back to austerity because as soon as we have austerity, that will be really very, 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 very bad for care, both for care workers, for uh, unpaid care, and for care at, at home that is really um, is in almost a slave mode in some uh, countries and is something very bad. So we really need to tackle this um, economic governance and we need to move away as much as possible from neoliberalism because sometimes there is this um of this temptation i would say in, in in politics and even in left wing politics that to 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 separate economics on the one hand and the social on the other hand and well let's i mean economics should we should grow and that should go all right and then we could do some social we could be very progressive on social but we keep being very neoliberal in economics and that we cannot do that because unless we change the macroeconomic policies and we abandon this deflationary bias and we really start to measure success in a completely different way, we will always have care underinvested, undervalued, and uh, we will have uh, workers full of precarization and without real possibilities of. Uh, of a career and a, and, a, and a profession. So we really need to, 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 to end up this kind of divorce in between social policy and economic policy. Economic policy should be social policy. Otherwise, we will never really uh, be, we will never be able to make this care deal or to advance towards this new organization of care. Mm. So it's, we are working on that, but it's really, as you could imagine, it's not, uh, it's not easy because it's, it's, uh, we, we are growth addict. I mean, mm. there is, uh, it's, it's kind of drag for, for, um, for politicians and for everyone else, growth, growth, growth. If I, if I may also perhaps pick you up on that, and this is a, a general comment uh, that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for any of the, um, of the participants and speakers uh, to, to react upon, but uh, you, you very much uh, highlighted also the, 
the uh, the consequence of uh, neoliberal uh, policies uh, over the years uh, and part of it has been also the push towards the marketization uh, of uh, of every aspect of human life and care has not been spared in any ways from that level uh, where we see that more and more elderly care home uh, are also uh, uh, privatized and so on and we could see uh, the severe consequences of this uh, in the midst of uh, of the covid-19 crisis so how how can we actually reimagine the nature and the scope of the economy so as to re-embed uh, re it in a society where care really becomes the organizing principle. Uh, and, and here I also refer to, to, the, to the terms uh, of, uh, of, the, of the article presented by Baba to have a real shift from, uh, from a system that is profit-driven to a system that becomes finally people-driven. Perhaps, perhaps Baba, you wish to uh, to comment on this level. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Leticia. Uh, what, what is striking is is that that the care and the whole care sector has been treated as sort of uh, adjacent to economic activities. It, it's sort of relegated to it. It's delinked. It seems to be delinked, and it 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 appears to be. Um, and it, it's always been treated as a drain on 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 the economy, uh, not seen as a social investment, but a but a but, but a drain. And unless we unless we integrate it and get away from this GDP-driven uh, the, the economic at, uh, analysis, uh, it, it's really what we're saying in the, in the paper is really placing care at the center. Um, and as Lina says, focused on 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 the social, on 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 people, and that the the economy serves social ends rather than the other way around. And it, it it's and there are certain sectors in the. This is my private opinion. Uh, in any case, there are certain sectors in the in 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 the economy. Which which cannot be privatized. They cannot be be. The, the, it's it's it, it's the sectors that it, it's public goods and care is a public good, and 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 what we've learned also and this is another side thought. What we learned from the pandemic is um, if we don't organize healthcare systems globally, and and have a just global approach to to healthcare in general. Uh, we won't be beating the pandemic, and we will not be able to, um, yeah, to give care its 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 its, its place in the economy. So, thank you, thank you very much uh, for for your for your answer, Baba. Uh, and um, I would like to to come back to an aspect that was uh, mentioned earlier, uh, and that uh, regards how care intersects also with migration. Uh, because also, as we know, uh, that uh, welfare system have been put increasingly under pressure, uh, namely due to the fact uh, that uh, uh, Europe has its, has its population that is constantly aging, but also the fact that uh, women's entering into the labor market has never really been met uh, with adequate uh, measure to take over uh, all, the, all the care duties. Uh, and many care workers actually migrate from, from, from Eastern to Western Europe. Uh, in order to uh, to make up uh, for the for the voids uh, that uh, that we have in our systems and also uh, in the in the lack of adequate uh, public uh, affordable public care services. So, Eleonor, if I may ask you this question, what would you say are the main issues and challenges in this kind of system, and what are the the, the consequences also for for the for the countries? Uh, can I say that I think the answer also links up with what Barbara and Lena have talked about. It's the liberalization. So we constantly had a push um, on the one hand in Northern and Western Europe of uh, remunerating care workers much less. So it becomes less and less attractive. And again, uh, Mad Madalena has picked up the issue in the chat about the privatization, not just of course of care workers, but also of nursing and other medical, you know, uh, medical professionals, um, which who've passed into the private sector with less, with worse conditions. So what we've seen is effectively, um, if we take Anna's uh, account, we have Polish 
care workers going to Germany um, to do often the live-in care. So the worst, often the worst kind of work, particularly um, in terms of live-in, has gone has is being done by migrant workers, and then Poland in turn imports Ukrainians. So we have this kind of complex. It isn't a single care chain; it's actually complex care chain. Um, again, if we look at Luisa's. In the UK, we had loads of Spanish and Portuguese nurses because you too have been pushed out of the Portuguese system because of a lack of resources. So I think we need to look at the issue of migration and I'm not necessarily against it, but I think that they, it, it shouldn't be the case because we are, we are liberalizing the system so much that everyone is being poorly remunerated, not just in money, but in conditions of work. And I think we need to look at employment conditions very much. So what we have are these complex intersecting um, migration chains, both for nurses, for doctors in some cases, and also for care workers, both from Southern Europe and from Eastern Europe. And then beyond Europe, they, they're being replacing those who are moving out of Eastern Europe. And I think we need to look at the picture as a whole, but linked up very much to this critique of the liberalization of the care and the health sectors, which are going on apace. I mean, just in the UK, uh, in the last week in my area, uh, we have supposedly a public health system, which has been bought up by an American private company. So we can see the way that governments are colluding in the privatization, I think, of both care and health sectors. And I think we need to tackle that um, very much in relation to what's happening in terms of migration. And of course, that it's women who are doing less nurses, may I say, we have quite a lot of male migrant nurses, but particularly at the lower levels, it's largely women who are doing this work often with very little protection because Eastern Europeans will have the right of residence, but they will still have to work often in unregulated work conditions. So I would say it's, a, it's, I think it's an issue that I think both Barbara and Lena are saying, we need to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Absolutely. Uh, I, see, I see that Baba wants to react and Lena as well. So that's very good. Uh, and perhaps at the same time, since uh, Baba, you are taking the floor, uh, it could be a good occasion to uh, take the opportunity to respond to uh, one specific question that was probably more directed to you uh, from the audience, uh, because we have Veronica from uh, Romania, uh, who is also a participant of the SND Youth Forum, and uh, she's asking you uh, a question about the 10 points plan. Uh, and more particularly, she wants to know uh, how this 10 points plan is also uh, helping the most vulnerable women. You have to unmute yourself, Baba. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so two issues. Uh, one issue, just to 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 supplement this 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 care chain uh, thing. In 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 Germany, we had an initiative to bring over nurses and care workers from Mexico because there was there wasn't enough. Uh, <laughs> human resources in, in, in the European context. So uh, the Ukrainians, the, 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 there weren't enough Ukrainians to bring into Germany, so, so they, they had to go to Mexico. So they, it's, it's really a global issue at this particular point in time. And uh, in terms of the, the, 10, the 10 point plan, uh, it's a framework it's, and, and it addresses uh, issues of intersectionality. So that is really addressing uh, uh, care workers in, in, in their specificity in particular, uh, and it is also addressing care workers, uh, what we call or tend to call domestic care workers, uh, which are really the worst off. Uh, it, it is important that when we look for data and statistics that, that, that we get a real picture of who is participating in, in the care sector, in, in what capacities, and under what working conditions. It is important that we also bring trade unions into, uh, in, in, in bring in, in, into their responsibilities in addressing and, and helping to unionize uh, the most vulnerable care workers. Uh, so in, in each of the 10 point plans, we, as I said before, there is a principle of a comprehensive integrated approach and an approach of addressing all, <laughs> The whole range of care workers, uh, and and 
and putting the responsibility uh, to to be inclusive onto these uh, onto on, onto the into in, into the policy regimes. Um, it's only a 10 point plan. It needs to be developed, but it needs to be developed according to certain principle and the principle of addressing those which are most vulnerable uh, should be primary, uh, a primary concern here. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, that brings us to, to Lina now, who seemed also to have something to be adding here. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, just a, a couple of, of issues. Um, um, uh, um, Picking up what uh, Eleanor and Barbara were saying is, is because of the financiarization of the whole economy and this financial mentality anchor could not be only profit driven. I mean, not, it's, it's, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is impossible. And now you were, Eleanor, you were saying there is the, 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 a, a whole uh, um, health system being sold to, because it's, it's profit, what is, moving the, the, the world and we are in a, this is the financial economy is eating up productive economy is eating up the the uh, care economy is eating in the the, the the family economy is eating everything this mentality that is uh, only um profit driven so it, it and in this study was saying before we published in famous economics in in 2011 we are we were using this care diamond because care could be provided also from the family from the community mm -hmm. from the market and from the public uh, institutions it was so clear that in in those countries in which the uh, the regime the care regime was more uh, towards the family, there was a lot of gender inequality. Put the Mediterranean countries, in in, in those where um, it was market driven uh, in a way, as uh, some, for instance, the UK or other more sort of liberal countries, uh, there were a lot of class inequalities. So there are all these inequalities depending, and there were these uh, countries that they were more sort of public. Um, uh, the equilibrium was towards the, 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 the public. There were more equal countries, both in terms of income or in terms of, of gender. So there are really possibilities, but the, the, the whole uh, neoliberal globalization is pushing us as as a more towards this financialization. And just one thing regarding this, it, it, it was Barbara saying that in Germany, uh, you, you don't have enough human resources is the same in Spain. Spain is full of Latin American, and we have a very high unemployment as well. And this is because care work is completely undervalued, and again, and and it is very, very, very precarious. And we have to 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 be careful with some of the things we are doing. We are now, for for instance, promoting a lot of STEM women in STEM. I'm also working on that in the parliament, and I think it's very important because we should be there because they are the very well paid jobs, and it's also the jobs they are uh, really designing the future, the cosmovision, especially with the algorithm and, and so on and so forth. But we cannot only work with girls saying, just go and stand, go and stand. We have to work also with boys, especially saying how important is care. And obviously valuing all this work that are related to care. I mean, we have to value from the very beginning for the, for the boys, because if we are talking all the time about all the talents we are missing with women are not entering on science and not entering in technology, but we never talk on how much talent male talent are we losing because of this care crisis and this care crisis will become worse because we are um uh we are an aging society in in a way so we really need also to value uh care from the very beginning with especially with boys that are not socialized on on care not even caring of themselves i mean the 10 point of barbara was self-care but we don't socialize boys to care uh, of themselves. So we really need to, 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 to see the whole picture because sometimes we, we will be doing something that is very good, but it could have in some very bad consequences <laughs> on the other side. Perhaps on this, actually, it would be would be a good occasion to uh, to pass over the, the floor to Louis, 
with himself working in a sector that is traditionally highly feminized. And uh, indeed, you, you, you rightly pointed out that gender equality is not just about bringing more women in the, uh, in the more prestigious positions, but it's about making the care sector uh, more valued in itself. So uh, we, we know that these, uh, these imbalances and inequalities are deeply rooted in, uh, in the patriarchal order. Uh, so, Louis, what would you say uh, are, uh, could be effective measures to also encourage more men uh, to become uh, more involved in care work? Okay, so thank you. Care work is definitely a highly feminized sector. As the foundation of nursing, for example, are so feminine, I feel that most young people still feel some prejudice about it. That's, a, that's why I think it's so important to include more men in this sector. It's a matter of cultural development. The best way to encourage more men to get involved in this care work is to be able to explain the profession and to end with some false speculation. Care workers are key professionals in healthcare systems, whether, whether they are men or women. They make a difference in people's lives and that's what matters. For me, the policy of gender equality and conciliation of professional and family obligations is not only a development factor that makes it possible to eliminate and promote better use of human resources, but also a necessary component for the evaluation of society. It's necessary then those gender stereotypes are fragmented to perfections to allow and then to inequalities in labor relations. In this sense, the articulation between gender, health and nursing is a good opportunity to discuss and expand political awareness about our reality. Thank you, thank you, Louis, uh, for complimenting on, on that important point. Uh, and I was uh, I was now looking on the the audience side because I see that we still have uh, questions. Uh, now time is running, so I would perhaps uh, ask uh, our uh, our speakers uh, to pick up these last two questions before uh, before we move for the for the wrap up. Uh, and more particularly, we had one question here, uh, I'm going to read it out, uh, that says, uh, how can we ensure that our healthcare professionals, such as nurses, but especially uh, care home professionals and staff who support older people and people with disabilities at home, receive fair, remuner fair remuneration for their work? Uh, so that is for one. Uh, and then uh, the second uh, question, um, which is also a bit of a, of a comment, uh, in Ireland, uh, a significant percentage of staff who provide support at home, as well as agency nurses, are for, from countries outside of the EU. During the pandemic, there were stories of staff working long hours in hospitals, uh, COVID wars, and supporting older people away from their families, arriving home to find out they were facing deportation from Ireland. What can be done to rectify this type of situation and prevent the injustice of staff risking their lives to support others being deported? Uh, two questions. Uh, who would like to, uh, to pick up on these ones? Um, can I just uh, jump in on the, there's been a lot of um, issues around um, migrant um, staff in the care sector um, having problems ranging right up to deportation. Um, whilst I think other countries, for example, like Italy, um, uh, enabled um, migrants, even if undocumented, uh, to stay in the country, um, and one hopes beyond COVID. So I think there are a whole series of issues about the treatment of migrant workers, who often have picked up COVID more than uh, the non-migrant population, because they've often been unprotected, whether they're doing nursing, or even doctors, or care workers, uh, they've often had the least protection, and that has also been a problem that I think we do need to address rather than, you know, sweep under the carpet. So I think, yeah, I would say that we have a number of issues, I think, that need to be resolved. Thank you. Uh, Baba, uh, I see that you're raising your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just picking up on what uh, Eleanor said in, in the Irish case, I'm, I'm a great believer in, um, in going to the courts. And this, this looks like a Strasbourg human rights court issue. Um, and there should be much, much more uh, of that kind of 
cases should be taken to, to the Strasbourg court and Ireland is a party to uh, the, the convention and, and that, that, would be my, that would be my recommendation. And as regards the question on remuneration, uh, I think, the, and I can only repeat it, unionization and unionization, unionization, it's trade unions that, that need to pick, pick up the issue. Um, I've been myself um, witnessing the creation of a trade union representation on domestic workers who have experienced domestic violence in where they were working. Uh, and it's, it's really been um, empowering for them. Uh, so that's the issue of violence, but, but more, more so the, the remuneration is something that the unions know more about than, than most other institutions. And that's an issue that needs to be resolved there, I think. Uh, I see that there are still fingers uh, uh, pointed, but unfortunately I see that uh, also we are way over time. So I'm, I'm slightly afraid that we, we cannot continue the debate, although it is very much against my own will because I would like to continue. Uh, and so that is why perhaps I would just ask each of you for one concluding sentence that you want uh, our participants uh, as a takeaway uh, to, uh, to bring uh, with themselves so that they can remember from this conversation starting from Lina uh, and then uh, each of you before, before we, we close uh, this, uh, this roundtable discussion. Well, just to, just really to say thank you, and this is uh, we have to do it more frequently because it is, it is good also to to bring together politicians, academics, and 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 care workers because really we we need to move the the agenda, the the visibility, and please count with me uh, both in my as academic but also now especially uh, uh, as politician at the European Parliament uh, to move the this agenda, the, the European Parliament as much as possible. So, and now I have to move to AMPLU committee because today we will be taking our <laughs> minimum wages. And um, and also I have ITRA committee with digitalization, which is very important and something that will affect us very much. And uh, really thank you very much. And uh, sorry that I have to to, to leave now, but it's, uh, I, I have to now to connect to, to another one. So thank you very much. Bye bye. Thanks to you. It was an honor to have bye. you. And congratulations, uh, Barbara, for your. Bye. Uh, perhaps I would then uh, give the floor to Anna. I would like to give one comment uh, to the question from chat for, for the end because I didn't mention that our union is now is now joining public sector. And in the future, we want also to uh, have uh, people from private sector. And I agree with this, with this, uh, with, with somebody who asked that private uh, sector, uh, in private sector, the working conditions are even, even yeah. worse. So uh, our union uh, wants to join private people from pri private sector too. So I, I want to s uh, say this for, for, for the end that it's we, we hope we'll have big union that will uh, that will make the working condition better for all care workers thanks a lot for this participation thank you thanks to you uh, this uh, brings me to give the floor to eleanor who maybe might still very shortly be able to squeeze uh, the last point that she she wanted to make yeah. Just to say, thanks ever so much for bringing everybody together. My last point was also, I agreed with Barbara, unionization. But I think one of the problems is that this, uh, and I know because we've talked to unions, there is a tension in them in terms of actually including and fighting for the lower levels. And I think this is what we also have to push because we've had some independent unions that have set up look, who are representing domestic workers, cleaners and porters in hospitals these are all people who are part of our you know caring world and i think we need to have unions that represent them as well thank you eleanor uh, the floor is to louis okay so finally i would like to thank you very much for your again for your invitation to be here today um, I deeply hope that the European governments look at care workers in a different way and they value them properly. Only with this strong appreciation can we have a just and people oriented Europe. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Louis. Uh, perhaps uh, Baba, you want to you want to go next? Yes, I, w 
I want to, 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 to make a point about something that norm, normally isn't talked about, um, but, which is self-care. Uh, it, it is tremendously important for those who care and those who are being cared for and for each one of us. So let's, let's, let's promote our own self-care. Um, and then I just wanted to thank uh, you, Leticia, and, and Fabs and Fess, and for, for having organized this, because I think it's a really, it could be a game changer. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. And let's make sure that uh, we make it become a real game changer. Uh, so Alina, before we can all go back to self-care, perhaps. <laughs> So be happy, be healthy, and I wish you when all this pandemic madness finish, hug people what you care. Thank you very much. Thank you very warmly to all our speakers for this very enriching debate. Uh, I had a lot of pleasure moderating it. Uh, also, thank you for caring to stay a bit longer than initially foreseen, uh, but I believe that we will go away uh, with, a, with a better idea on how we can strive for a fair society, a people-centered economy, and a place where care is truly valued. And once again, confirming the feminist uh, saying that the, the, the private is actually political. So thank you. And I will, I will, uh, I will pass on the, the floor to, uh, to Anna. Uh, also asking actually my other colleagues to come back to the screen for a very quick family picture. So I'm calling in uh, Agnes, Eliane, Elena, uh, and whoever was actually in the backstage uh, preparing this event so that we can have a, we can have a family picture before we close this, uh, this fantastic event. So everyone's there. Yes, I'm not seeing Eliane yet. Okay, perfect. Cheese, I'm taking it. Uh, voilà. It's in the box. The floor is yours, Anna. Thank you, uh, Leticia, and thanks for all the speakers for such an interesting panel discussion roundtable regarding such an important topic. And even though we did not have that much time, I think panelists managed to um, cover all the aspects of the care, starting from the European level, going more globally, and also mentioning uh, different dimensions of care. Uh, that starts, of course, with self-care and then on a community level, caring from the perspective of the state, caring economies, and then at the end, that is also most important that we mention caring regarding the environment and caring regarding the world we are living in. Uh, indeed, uh, the care work is uh, highly feminized and therefore that, that's a reason that is undervalued. And a lot of times we hear that care, care work is um, captured by the big corporations that are using the care uh, for, for the profit. And here, since I know a lot of a young audience are listening to us, I personally want to um, mention a movie I just saw a couple of days ago. You can also check it in Netflix. It's called I Care A Lot. And maybe um, also uh, it's uh, to link it somehow to our discussions. Um, this movie shows how uh, broken the system sometimes can be. And it's not about that uh, someone doesn't care, but it's about who cares. And just to conclude, uh, uh, if the Europe or if the state give up the sphere to private corporations, then they will for sure capture it. And then we have the wrong people who start to care about the most vulnerable, most um, discriminated people who really need our support. So indeed, uh, I would also share the messages uh, from the speaker uh, speakers uh, uh, that called for uh, caring for each other, for caring for our, our communities, and of course, for caring for our environment and the world. So I want to uh, thanks one, once again uh, to organizers, uh, to speakers, and of course, most importantly, to the participants who also contributed a great deal uh, for this very, very successful event. Um, so thanks a lot for joining to us um, and hope to see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>